This video is an explanation of the proportions and non-proportions project, so I don't have to record a new video every single year. I'm going to start by saying this is due on whatever date is on your project paper. For the students who are in class as I record this video, that is March 4th, 2022. This video is going to be reused in future years, so that date may be different. Please make sure you're paying attention to the date applicable to you. Understand, late projects will be heavily penalized. That means if you turn it in late, you're automatically going to earn very reduced credit. I always give multiple weeks to work on a project, so there is plenty of time to get it done, plenty of time to have it in early, so there's really no excuse for it being late. The objective of this project, the whole purpose, is I want you to solidify your understanding of the characteristics of proportions by contrasting proportional and non-proportional relationships. We had several assignments, several lessons where we talked about this. Now you're going to do it completely on your own. So what is it that you're going to do? You are going to create a situation that is proportional. You will contrast it meaning you're going to compare and say, look at this is how it's different, this is how it's similar. You're going to contrast it with the situation that is non-proportional. You will do that contrast by using tables, graphs, equations, and a story. So how will you contrast it? You're going to create a table, graph, story for each. Oh, and equation for each. That way you can contrast them, say, here's a table for a proportion, here's a table for a non-proportion. Here's a table for a graph, or here's a graph for a proportion, here's a graph for a non-proportion. How are you going to do this? These are the step-by-steps. You're going to start, and we will do this at the end of this video, brainstorm various, I'm not going to highlight this one, brainstorm various relationships, real-life situations, any sort of situation, like the height of a plant over time cans per box, paper towels per case, students per classroom, so many different things. You are going to brainstorm relationships. You can see I have provided a space for you to brainstorm ideas. So the brainstorm is going to be listing a bunch of ideas. You can even go back and look at different problems that we have done to give you some ideas. After you brainstorm, you are going to choose one of the ideas that you came up with. Choose one type of relationship. What you're going to do, you want to make sure that one of those relationships is proportional. When you find a proportional relationship, you need to represent it in all of these ways. You need to write a story or a verbal description. For example, and when I give this example, that means you cannot use this example. I would say, I have a plant that is 12 inches tall. It grows one inch per month. Okay, that is a verbal description, a very short story. Okay, with that information, I would then need to create a table of values. You need to make sure that you use at least six pairs of values. As you're doing that, you need to make sure, please write this in, please include labels on your table. Don't just start with numbers, make sure that we use labels. So not just an X and a Y, but also for my example, my X value would be the months that I've had the plant. The Y values would be the height of the plant. Okay, so my, my labels on the table should be yes, an X and a Y, that's going to help, but it should also be what it actually represents in that story, months and height. You will take all that information from your table and you will re represent that situation on a graph, again, including the labels. So just like we would have an X axis and a Y axis, I don't want you to just use X and Y, X would be labeled month, so you need to include that label while the Y is going to be labeled height. So again, labels are important. 
Then you are going to write an equation to represent the situation. When you're writing your equation, most of the time when we've written equations in class, we've written something like x times something equals y, right? This time though, I really want you to be specific and say where x equals months or where y equals the height. Once again, it's those labels. If you're going to use x, please tell me what x means. So that part here I'm going to highlight explaining what each variable represents. So if you're going to use x, tell me what x represents. If you're going to use y, tell me what the y represents. You will also, and I'm going to highlight this because this is where students last year lost some points, explain any numbers in the equation. So for the made-up situation that I've come up with, it would be y is equal to x times 1, blah, 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 blah. I'd have to explain, what does that y represent? That 1, or sorry, what does the 1 represent? The 1 represents the inches grown per month, something like that. Identify three ways that show the relationship is proportional using various representations. I'm going to highlight that too, and then I'm going to go to a different sheet so that you know what I'm talking about. Identify three ways to show the relationship is proportional using all of those representations. Please find, for students in class that's going to be flipping your packet over, please find this page. The first thing that you need to do, well, is brainstorm. So we're going to brainstorm here. Then after that, you're going to choose one of your situations and you're going to write it down here. Like I said, my plant situation. Okay. You're going to create a table of values. Do you see how there's this already? It's going to be an X and a Y, yes, but it's also, in addition to X and Y, it's going to be whatever you have chosen for your X and whatever you've chosen for your Y. You're going to fill in this whole table of values. Then you're going to graph it. See how the graph is already labeled X and Y? So that means you need to make sure you include your other label, not just the X axis, but whatever you're measuring on the X axis. Please also include an appropriate scale. What are you going to be counting by in the x's? What are you going to be counting by in the y's? Then you're going to write an equation. In this space below, explain in words what each letter and what each number represents in that equation. So see how I did all of that here in this little tiny space? You're going to be putting all of that information that I did there here in the equation and then in explaining what all of that means. The last part here, explain how you know the relationship is or is not proportional. Give as many reasons as you can. If you want full points here, you need to explain using the graph. You need to explain using the table. You need to explain using the equation. And you need to explain using the information in the story. If you want full points, you've got to explain using every single representation. Okay, now I'm going to go back to the other side so I can finish reading. All the things that we just talked about, we just showed what that's going to look like on your project paper. Now, you also need to choose a relationship that is not proportional. And with your non-proportional relationship, you're going to represent it using all of the same ways. Now, I did make a mistake. The example that I gave earlier, the plant height over the course of several months, that was actually a non-proportional one. Okay, so I did make that mistake. To fix that situation, I might say something like, my plant is a tiny seed below the ground, but it grows one inch every month. That would fix that situation. For my not proportional, I could take the exact same situation if I want to, and I could say, now I bought a plant that is already 12 inches tall, and it grows one inch per month. That's going to be not proportional. How do I know it's not proportional? It's not going to go through the origin. You guys already see that, right? And that would be some of the things that I would discuss down here. So again, let's just see. When I choose the not proportional relationship, what do I need to do? Write a story. Explain that situation. 
All it takes is just a few sentences and you have all that space to do it. Explain the situation. Create a table of values using at least six pairs of values. And once again, please write, include labels. Don't have so many pairs of numbers that you forget about the actual labels. Include labels in the table. And of course, you're going to represent that non-proportional relationship as a graph with the labels. And you will write an equation to represent the situation. This is going to be tough. This is an eighth grade level thing, but we've practiced it enough in class. You guys could probably still figure it out. So if you need help, plan enough in advance that you can come and ask me those questions. Okay? Write an equation to represent the situation. And just like before, tell me what the variables are and explain what those variables represent. Again, x is months, y is height. Also, explain any numbers in the equation. And finally, you will identify three different ways. It says three different ways, but I told you I really would like to see four. I'd like to get you to include the story as well. Identify at least three. Do as many as you can to how you know it is not proportional. So again, let's come back over here. You have a side by side. There's one, and then there's another. Let's make sense of what that means first. Do you see how this one, it says, this is my, and then I say, circle one. Do you want your first one to be your proportional relationship? If so, you'll circle proportional relationship. And then my next one would be the non-proportional. So I would circle on the other one, non-proportional. That way, when I'm grading, I'm going to say, okay, they circled proportional. Everything here should be proportional. Or they circled non-proportional. Everything here should show non-proportions. And again, just like before, show me all the ways that you know. Use the story to explain how you know it's not proportional. Use the graph to explain how you know it's not proportional, etc. And finally, back to the front page. This project is worth 20 points. 10 points for each relationship. Okay. It says turn in this description with your project for one extra credit point. That means don't lose this paper because it's already attached. As long as you turn this in, you'll automatically get your one extra credit point. Okay. What questions do you have? Emily. I agree. If you get confused, just look at your notes. Almost like we've been talking about this for a really long time, so we should know all of these things, right? I agree. Great idea, Emily. Thank you for sharing that. Any other questions? Okay. I'm going to end the recording then, and if you come up with your question later, you can always ask me later. Uh, that is it. If you have questions, email me. Come and see me in class. This is your proportions and non-proportions project. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.